Okay, now we're going to be learning how to remove a double chin, or as it's more affectionately known, a chin chin. So let's have a look here. Okay, lovely photo, mother with her daughter, but yeah, a bit of the old chin chin here. Uh, what we could do is, um, first of all, is always um, duplicate your um, your layers, so you have the uh, you can afford yourself the before and after. And if you make any mistakes, you can always delete them, go back, and so forth. So much more flexibility when you duplicate what you're doing. Always leave the original behind. Uh, there we go. So. Two tools for the job, clone stamp tool, and what this would do in this case is uh, we could um, clone a bit of the clothing here and uh, get that into the uh, in the chin and uh, get rid of the double chin that way, but um, a much better tool for this particular photo. In some cases, the, um, you know, the clone stamp tool will actually work out pretty good, but there's a much better one for this job, which is the liquify filter. So let's zoom in here and see what we could do. Now using the default tool, the... Um, the first one here, the uh, forward wrap warp tool. Make sure that you have a brush size that is uh, big enough so that um, when you're when you're moving the chin, you're not having to move it too many times. If you use a, a pretty small brush, you're not going to be um, affecting too many areas, obviously. But you, you're going to be moving these things a lot, and it, it's going to be hard to try to make a nice curved line. And and just, you don't want something too big because you know you're going to start moving everything else along with it. So you just want to strike a balance somewhere along probably here is good um, make sure that you have a low density and pressure somewhere in the 30s I suppose for at least for this photo you don't want uh, things to be moving too quickly right you, if you if you if you have these things high enough um, any any sort of move you're gonna do and you, the chin is gonna be up here so small density and what you're doing is just gradually moving things up now what I like to do is not just focus on one area here and just move that up what I like to do is just work on the whole thing on the all of the chin and um, try to get it to an acceptable curved non chin chin <laughs> version of herself but uh, just work on the whole thing not just one bit at a time but all of it at once and you're just moving that up obviously there are other areas to correct but as long as you're not messing up all these other areas too much right now then it's looking good you just um, focus on the first task here which is just to move the chin you can move the chin down as well not just up bit of mixture you'll find that works pretty good and a nice sort of curvy jawline if you will Always good to uh, zoom out and uh, see what it is that you're doing because sometimes close up you can't really tell um, too well whether or not you've finished or not. And uh, this is looking, it's looking all right. Uh, let's take a bit off here. Okay, that looks good. Now let's um, let's move in the neck here a bit. Now once you start getting to these areas here, it's usually a good idea to just zoom in more and actually just use a smaller brush so that you're not affecting too many other things like the, the chin here. And you just want to make that neck sort of just tuck it in a bit. Always use your um, bracket keys on your keyboard to make your uh, brush smaller or bigger. It's a very uh, quick way to uh, make modifications as you need to without having to um, resort to changing brush size here and so forth so it's a good tip okay zoom out see where you're at okay Do a bit more work here now there's another tool that we're going to use which is the um, uh, the the healing brush tool to actually remove some of these uh, other folds and so forth. Right now we just want to sort of just do the um, the cosmetic surgery, just the, the jaw lines and just the, the, essentially the outlines of, of things first. Um, we're going to be removing, you know, some other little details with the uh, with the other brush tool. So I think that looks pretty decent. So uh, let's go. Okay. Um, best way to check whether or not you did a pretty good job actually is just to uh, um, make this invisible and look at your original image and then look at the one you have you're working on now. 
and see if that's uh, an improvement. And um, overall, I think uh, it is. So let's uh, keep on going. Now we're going to be using the um, the healing brush tool. What I like doing with the healing brush tool is that it's it sometimes, especially when you get there's a skin here and then there's the um, there's a clothing here and you have some different areas of uh, light and skin tone and dark skin tone and so forth. So what I like doing is just creating another layer, and uh, we'll just uh, call this uh, healing, for example, and we'll call this um, no chin chin. And on this healing layer here. Um, Go ahead and select the healing brush tool and make sure that you're sampling um, all layers or just the current and below layer actually just to be sure that we're just sampling this one but it would be this case anyways. And uh, what we want to do here is just uh, zoom in a bit and just start um, cloning away a bit of, of bit of the folds. Now if you make a mistake like obviously here it got too close to the clothing and made this dark just obviously you could undo or you could just just remove that. And that's that's the advantage of using this uh, a separate healing layer is that you're not you're not making any changes to you know the layer below it, so it's not really a problem if you find out later on that you've made a bit of a mistake, and uh, you don't have to redo everything over again. Okay, and um, it's usually a good idea not to mess around with this stuff too much. And uh, we can uh, turn on our healing layer on and off and see what it is that we've done. We've uh, applied this a bit too much here. Let's actually just redo this area here. Because what we just really need is just that little bit of a curve there. We're probably going to use the clone tool actually. Very small clone tool. Just get as close as we can, probably on this side. Um, clone all layers. And just repair that a little bit okay so there we have it 